What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. All right, this story's called, Reneg, once the job's done, prepare for your just desserts. What about dinner and appetizer? A few years after I started my business, I was asked to clean up and optimize a number of PCs in multiple locations, as well as set up some forms and templates for a new client who owned a local restaurant. The work, all labor apart from a little travel, was performed over the space of a month due to scheduling conflicts in school holidays holidays. But on completing the last of it, the client confirmed verbally that he was happy with all I'd done and to go ahead and send an invoice. I duly emailed an invoice for a sum just in excess of 400 pounds. I waited for payment, never heard anything, sent reminder emails, called and left messages, but no response. Eventually, a couple of busy months had passed and I met the client by chance in the local supermarket. On asking why he'd not paid or been in touch, he he said that all the PCs were as bad as they had been before I'd started, and that he had tried to contact me with no success, as my landline and mobile phone had caller display as well as all answering services, and there had been no emails. I knew the latter was beaver sausage, and any PC user knows a system can easily go back to pot if the user's bad habits don't change. So I contacted a local debt collector, gave him the details, printouts of all my call logs and post invoicing emails and he took them to the restaurateur. On his return, his words were, He's not disputing the invoice. He's saying that the work wasn't done right, so it's his word against yours. I queried if it was worth taking the guy to small claims court, to which the debt collector said, Even if you could prove he confirmed he was satisfied with the work, they might insist you get his computers back to their pre-invoice state again. Do you really want to spend more time doing that? Of course the answer was no, so I stewed it over and in my mind and came up with a plan. At this point, it was late November, so creating two throwaway email accounts and female names, I got in touch with the restaurant to book a large party for Valentine's night the following February. I put it down as my husband's surprise 40th birthday party, confirmed that my husband's sister and CC'd her in the message with the other throwaway. Couldn't make the journey north, but would happily pay the 10 pounds a head deposit as her share towards the night. Of course, as time went on, the ideas grew arms and legs. The numbers attending increased until the owner suggested he'd reserve the whole restaurant for the evening and they'd happily arrange the seating to suit us. But could I ensure the deposit was sorted ASAP, please? Of course, I confirmed that the sister was a scatterbrain and that I'd ensure the check was with him very soon. He emailed the sister using the CC address and she confirmed it had been posted. To keep him on side, I asked for a proposed menu in advance so that I could send it to all the attendees for pre-ordering. Naturally, they were delighted that they know this as it makes their life much easier. Consequently, the numbers for all three courses were emailed in, with a few fussy eater variables thrown in for a good measure. Needless to say, by the beginning of February, he was getting quite antsy about there being no sign of the deposit, but I assured him that the sister's check must have been lost in post so she'd send another by special delivery, if they could ensure someone was there to sign for it. I knew the owner lived about 25 miles away and the restaurant didn't open until 5 p.m. So he'd have to come in very early and hang around waiting for it. A week before D-Day and he'd obviously had enough. He emailed in a spat saying they turned away numerous inquiries, had no deposit and could no longer hold back on taking other bookings. This time I didn't bother replying. My part was done. My wife at the time and I were booked in at another restaurant close by for our own Valentine's meal. After which, we took a walk past the restaurant to our business premises to see just two cars in their parking lot, one of which was his. I'm not sure how much he must have lost out on on that night, but knowing his prices, I'd bet it was significantly more than the 400 plus pounds I'd invoiced him. Of course, lessons were learned by me too. Get written or emailed confirmation of job satisfaction for one, and not letting new clients go unbilled for too long was an 
other. Naturally, I had no hesitation letting all and sundry know how he'd behaved, either. So, he was blacklisted or forced to pay up front for any work by IT and other professionals I knew locally. Good job. <laughs> Hopefully he learned his lesson. Um, I honestly started feeling kind of bad toward the end for the dude. <laughs> oh man, but he got what was coming to him. This story's called Fired From Last Job, but I got the last laugh. Hard in the format, I am on mobile. I worked at a retail chain that sold pet supplies and products. When I started working there, it was great. Family owned and everyone I worked with was fantastic. The owners eventually wanted to retire and sold the small chain to an investment group. Once the investment group took over, almost all but a few employees were let go, forced out, or just quit. I hung on for a little while longer before I got promoted at my other job. New company brings in new manager to my store. My store was the top performing store in the entire chain, bringing in about $10,000 to $12,000 a day on average. It was always more on weekends and especially around the holidays. The new manager is a Mr. Company Man. Company and he told him they only want employees around for two to three years. Myself and two others had been there for 10 plus years, so naturally he began ruffling feathers and giving us all a hard time. Unfortunately, he decided on me first. Mr. Company Man found out I worked two jobs. The two jobs are not in related fields, so there was no chance of any conflicts of interest on my end. However, my second job requires me to work nights and weekends. When Mr. Company Man found this out, he he demanded I work nights and weekends there, so it was fair for everyone. I didn't work nights and weekends there because I was that store's only OSHA certified forklift operator, and deliveries didn't come in at night. They came weekday mornings every day. Mr. Company Man didn't want to hear that and told me I either had to work nights and weekends or that day would be my last day. I told him, don't threaten me with a good time. I suppose today is my last day then. I was pretty pissed about that, but it's not a big deal now. Ended up being the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I went home early, didn't finish my shift because screw them. But when I got home, I decided to call my local OSHA inspector and report them for not having a certified operator on staff, as well as numerous other hazards. Needless to say, they lost close to three weeks profit from all the violations the inspector found. I was surprised they even showed up. In my state, the inspector will call you back after an inspection and tell you if your claims were founded or not. Mine were. And Mr. Company got his ass chewed out so bad he ended up quitting. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect this to really get any attention. Thanks all for the awards. To add a bit more, after I was fired, it really motivated me to get my behind in gear and get back to school, working as a stationary engineer now. Thanks, everyone. That's a good story. I'm glad you didn't take his crap. Um, Because the worst thing that you could let a bad boss know is that you need the job <laughs> because he will take advantage of that this story's called don't pay for fireplace ended up with a house full of smoke edit i meant wood stove not fireplace i didn't know there was a difference until someone pointed this out to me <laughs> a friend of mine used to install wood stoves and sell firewood he still sells firewood but stopped bothering with fireplaces this one guy bought a fireplace and wanted it installed my friend did this but told him he would need a higher chimney for better air dry. The guy refused it. I'm assuming maybe he didn't want a higher chimney for the look. And my friend kept insisting. The owner said no, and when the fireplace was done, he complained it was hard to get a fire going due to the chimney being too short, leading to poor drying of air. My friend came with a chimney extension, and it worked fine. But he decided he didn't want to pay still, even though the job was done and done well. So a few weeks later, my friend was passing through the air, Area and saw nobody was home, but there was a fire going to keep the house warm. Owner must have been at work. So my friend climbed up onto the roof and got his chimney extension back. It was a plus, but not enough to cover everything that was installed and the time put in. Where things get funny is that once he took the extension off the chimney, due to poor drying of air, the house started to fill up with smoke as the fire burned. The owner must have come back home to a thick smoke-filled room, trying to get the smell out of stuff. <laughs> Probably a layer of soot on everything. To my recollection, the owner did not have any pets. Oh, thank God I was going to say something. So no lives were harmed. But when everything you own is black and reeks like smoke, and your home is freezing in the
the middle of winter, I bet you would rather have paid someone for their products and services. I hate people like that. When they know from the point they hire you, no matter how good of a job you do, they will try to find some reason not to pay you. That is horrible. <laughs> God, that could have been so bad if there was like a pet or something that lived in the house with them. Oh my God. That is, okay. I like this revenge and execution, but I don't know, man. This is reckless. This story's called Opening My Big Mouth at Work. So without giving too much away, my company mostly deals in customer service via phone and mobile messaging. They kindly give us off both Thanksgiving and Black Friday every year. However, one rule they have in place, basically because they can, regarding overtime is silly. And hopefully they learn, thanks to some petty revenge, to the company's detriment. This rule regarding overtime, whenever an employee works beyond on their 40 hours, they are paid time and a half. If that week they do not work 40 hours, either because of time off or a holiday, they would only receive regular pay for working extra time. This is in compliance with state law where the company is headquartered. On Thanksgiving Eve this year, as we referred to the Wednesday before Turkey Day, we had a major tech issue that brought the company to a standstill. Normally this wouldn't be too crippling to our clients because our phones are traditionally dead before the holidays as people travel en masse. On this 2020, our year of our virus, <laughs> we were getting a normal day's volume, and we could do hardly anything to help with half our software out of commission. We explained the issue, noted their question, and promised they would hear from us no later than Monday. Management frantically watched the calls pour in and the promises to call back build up and took to the online forum, we all work from home, begging for employees to work overtime from Friday to Saturday to chew a substantial way through the call list. In anticipation of the extra cash, volunteers amassed. I was ready to throw in my hat as well, but had been at the company for a long time, knew better. But I wondered, would this be the one time they'd rethink their stringent policy and grant the extra pay? Innocently, I forgot about the policy and exclaimed on the thread in delight. Yes, I could use the time and a half to buy gifts this year. You could see three members of upper management start type and stop for a decent five minutes. Finally, one of them must have gotten the green light and worked out the pleasant and warm company speak wording to let us know we could go F ourselves if we thought we could get extra holiday pay for working Thanksgiving weekend. Boy, did those volunteers drop off real quick. And does this mean that I just subjected the whole crew of phone reps to extra work on Monday? Ha! No. We'd be overbooked the week after a holiday anyway. There are only so many people we can physically call in an eight hour day. No, for those extreme high volume times, they deploy the management. Good job, fellers. Management is salaried and doesn't get extra money for extra time. Edit to note that today is that Monday and I happen to be off on pay time off today. It'll be interesting to see the fallout tomorrow. Update. I just logged in about a half hour ago for my shift, a bit early as I usually do when I anticipate reading lots of emails and the employee forum. Oh boy, apparently four regular employees bit the bullet and helped on Friday. To put that in perspective, they were trying to get three to five people per team to help. And we have about, cheats and glances at forum, eight main teams. They had a fifth of what they needed, at best. Those poor four sots. Usually by Tuesday after a holiday weekend, it's back to normal. Monday after, we usually have about 15 pages of backlog because of the people who insist on calling during the holiday and over the weekend and leaving a message. Today, Tuesday, I'm looking at 32 pages of backlogged messages. Eep. Well, half the head honcho those in charge of our part of the business have been awfully quiet on the forum these past two days, it appears. The other half, well, <laughs> you need to be trained in the job to do it. So the head of payroll, for instance, is not involved. But those guys are acting like cut rate cheerleaders. Come on, team, we can do this. Well, sure, but you aren't getting cursed out by impatient customers with four day old problems. Is anything going to change? Probably not. 
But I guess we shall see around Christmas if someone decides to cripple the internet again before that. Thanks for reading. Yo, no overtime is whack. Management of OP's company, you suck and you're jerks and I don't like you. Boom. That'll leave him crying. All right, this story's called, I Got My Brother to Shut Up. So when I was a kid, I was having an argument with my brother. I have no idea what it was about, but he was definitely wrong. Anyway, he was under the impression that being loud made him right. So he kept getting louder and louder until he finally was just straight up yelling. At this point, I had stopped talking because there was no way I would have been heard anyway. So I decided to just wait until he finished his rant to explain to him why he was wrong. Then, suddenly, I could feel a sneeze coming on. A huge sneeze. So I did the only logical thing and yelled, HEY! Causing my brother to stop for a moment and look directly at me. Giving me the perfect opportunity to sneeze directly in his stupid face. He was so confused he stopped yelling. And my mom laughed so hard she forgot to punish me. So I'm pretty sure I won that argument. Hell yeah you did, brother. That's funny as hell. I love it. Uh, can't get away with that with many other people other than your your brother just sneezing in their face especially in 2020 wow good timing buddy you trying to make us sneeze on each other you trying to make brovid spread wow this guy's like trying to kill everyone come on op how's your fruitcake don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode